Hey guys, Jody here. I'm gonna go over a couple of things that I have learned over the last couple years of working remotely. I feel that since now that we're in a time in the world where everybody is being uh, quarantined and kept in their own homes, I think there's a couple of useful tips that I can show you that will really help your your day to day um, your day to day operations with the, when it comes to your business and what you're looking to do. Uh, these are a couple apps that we've used um, inside my company for a long time, and they have really really come along way since we first started. So let's hop over to the screen. I'm going to show you a couple of them. The first one that I want to show you is Crisp. So Crisp is an AI based tool and this AI based tool is actually a noise cancellation tool. So when you are on Zoom call or you're on a Skype call and maybe there is some noise in the background, they use adaptive AI in order to suppress the unwanted uh, sounds and amplify your voice. So we've used this a bunch of times in busy coffee shops when there's construction going on outside. Um, it's a super easy app to um, to install, and you basically go to your dashboard. Now let me show you this here. On your dashboard, it installs up at the top, up at the top. Um, and you have, you load it up. You basically save the speaker that you're using, the microphone that you're using, and then you turn it on. And it is incredible at how much it can suppress noise. So if you have dogs barking or you have kids playing in the background, you can continue to do your job without having any distractions on the line. Because we all know what it's like to have distractions on the line. All right, let's talk about number two. Number two on this list is Zoom. Now, Zoom has come a long way, um, or video conferencing, I should say, has been around for a long time, uh, but Zoom was the first company to actually get it right. So Zoom allows you to do all sorts of really cool things. If you have a Zoom, um, let me pull one up here for you. If you have, if you've never used Zoom before, you basically get an app that you install in on your computer. You have access to an app on your phone. People have dial-in numbers so they can call in from anywhere around the country. And it's very easy to build up a virtual meeting that you can have um, face-to-face contact. Ever since uh, Microsoft bought Skype, Skype used to be the standard that we used, um, but they messed around with it too much and it ended up not being a really great reliable tool. So we stopped using Skype and we moved over to Zoom and we haven't looked back. It's uh, our morning meeting. Uh, we do our morning all hands meeting uh, in a Zoom conference call. We tend to do audio only. Um, sometimes we will do video if uh, everybody is uh, set up and going, um, but a lot of times when people are working from home, they uh, let the personal hygiene stuff slide a little bit. So that means that they may not want to be seen on camera. All right, the next big app that I have to show you guys is Trip Mode. So if we come over to my computer here, Trip Mode shows up in the top uh, right hand corner as a, um, a little train. Um, what it allows you to do is once you turn it on, you can select which programs are actually accessing internet. Now, if you're someone who travels a lot and you're used to tethering and using data packages, this app will save your butt because sometimes you can get Dropboxed, which means that when you turn on your internet and you're tethering and maybe you don't have your Dropbox paused and someone has shared a huge file with you, all of a sudden you get to a point where your data is completely used up and you don't know understand why. Trip mode saves this problem. Trip mode is also super useful when it comes to trying to limit the amount of bandwidth other programs are using. So if you're on a limited bandwidth situation where you don't have enough uh, pipe in order to push your video signal through, um, and it might be because Dropbox is deciding to synchronize in the background, you can turn on trip mode, you can block all of the services that you are using except the ones that you want to be accessing the internet and you can make use of that entire pipe, um, making the communication a lot better. I mean, um, trip mode is something that I use all the time. I use it more than I thought I would when I first got it. When I first got it, I thought I would only use it for tethering. Turns out I actually use it in my day-to-day -day, um, work when I'm trying to get video conferencing to work the way I want it. So trip mode, really, really great app. Next, let's take a moment and talk about the difference in Wi-Fi. Now, this isn't really an app, but this is something that I thought would be really helpful to kind of explain to you the difference between a 5G wireless connection and a 2.5G wireless connection. So when you're working at home, you might have a router that probably has two connections, and you may not know what the, what the difference is between 5G and 2.5G. A lot of people real think that, I mean, 5G sounds like it's a bigger number, so it should move more data, which is true, but the draw 
drawback to 5G is because it's millimeter wave, you, it doesn't go through as many walls. So say for example, you're working from home, it's a beautiful sunny day and you wanna go out on the patio and start using your Wi-Fi out, wi out there. You might be better off connecting to the 2.5G version because 2.5G goes through walls much better than 5G does. I know that I personally have a garage downstairs where I like to go and put on YouTube videos when I'm working on, the, on my motorcycle or when I'm trying to do workouts. And I can't even get my 5G signal through one floor of, of, of building. The 2.5G, however, does make it through. Now be aware that when you're running 2.5G, you are going to be on lower bandwidth. It doesn't push as much bandwidth through. It can barely handle video. So, you know, if the option is available for you to go 5G, and most of the time I think like it's a good idea to be line of sight to the router, definitely go with 5G. However, if you have to go through walls and you're in a different part of the room, go with the 2.5G. It'll definitely give you more flexibility. All right, now let's talk about equipment that I use. Um, a noise pair of noise canceling headphones have done magic for my personal health um, as well as my ability to concentrate at home. So I have a pair of uh, quiet soft Bose headsets. Um, these are noise canceling. They auto shut off, which is really, really important, especially when working at home and you could get distracted. I find that the auto shut off is a huge feature for me, um, especially when someone calls or I take them off and I get distracted. Um, it really allows me to save the battery and I don't go and put them on and go, oh my goodness, oh, they're now dead and now they're not useful for me. So I sometimes actually even wear these noise canceling headphones when I don't even have a um, when I don't even have any music playing or any podcasts on. I just like the idea of them drowning out all of the other noises that are around me, like things that show up that you don't necessarily notice, um, like outdoor noise, um, noise from heaters, noise from refrigerators, all of the stuff that happens inside a home that when it's quiet and you're focused can actually drive you a little crazy. All right, let's take a minute and talk a little bit about software. So for my team and what we use, uh, Slack is essential. Slack is a uh, instant messaging, if you haven't heard of it by now, um, it's instant messaging for teams. It allows people to communicate uh, around the world. Um, you can install apps into it. It's really, really useful. Um, you can spin up a Slack channel super, super easily. It doesn't cost anything for the first uh, 10,000 messages. Um, and then if you want to start using it and keeping everything, then it's it's time to start paying for it. We personally started paying for it about two years ago, um, and it is the most essential tool that we use across our um, entire company. It is where all of the work actually happens is on Slack. All right, I wanna tell you about another tool that we use, uh, video. Obviously video is super important when you're working remotely, but we use video in a way to explain what it is that we need to update on our sites and what changes that are gonna be made. And for a long time, we were using ScreenFlow. And ScreenFlow is the one that is I use for all of my YouTube videos here. Um, I use it in a way that allows me to do editing and it really allows me to be uh, put out a more professional looking video. However, um, if you just wanna capture something and show something to somebody, highly recommend Loom. Loom is a plugin for Chrome. It allows you to install it straight into your browser. You click the button, you record it using your built-in microphone in your Mac, and away you go. It's available for PC as well as for uh, Mac. So it's cross-platform. You can have anybody use it that um, is trying to explain something to you that is remotely and they can't stand over top of your shoulder. So, you know, look into Loom. Loom is a really important uh, tool that we use. All right, the final thing that I wanna talk about is your working environment. Um, I can't stress enough how important it is to have a proper desk um, and a proper chair to do your work. It gives you somewhere to go. Um, the other piece that I would really like to mention is that getting dressed for work is a critical, critical importance um, to making sure that you're active in getting things done and you're focused on what it is that you are trying to accomplish. Getting dressed puts you in the right headspace. So, you know, hanging out in your in your cozies on the couch, maybe in a, in a hoodie and maybe some sweatpants, although is quite lovely on the weekends, if you're gonna be working from home, you are still going to work. So getting dressed for the day is super, super critical in order for you to feel productive and get your day going. 
All right, I'm gonna link all of these things that I talked about in the description down below. Please take a moment to go through the list. We've also created a blog post that goes over this in a little bit more detail, so you can check that out on our website. Um, if you need any help with your online stores and if you're trying to clear out inventories, now is a great time to do it. So definitely uh, get in touch with us if there's something that you need some help with. We're always here to help and we want to make sure that you all stay safe during this uh, quarantine period. So. Um, Best of luck to you all, and we will catch you in the next one.